Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and today I'm going to walk you through the Gliss EQ by Voxengo. Right here on the top, you can see I can name the instance, and I've already named this guitar. If I click on it, I get this uh, drop down menu with even a keyboard, and uh, I've already named that. I'll show you later what that can be helpful for. Beside that, I can change the oversampling which happens in this plugin, and I've set that to the highest, and that allows us to work at a higher sample rate in this plugin, so it basically will EQ a lot more accurate, so it can be seen as the quality of the plugin. Beside that, I've got a bypass switch, which allows me to bypass the whole effect of this plugin, so it's basically doing nothing. In the row below that, I've got, got some presets which I can load. Here I've got an undo switch, which allows me to undo my latest actions, like uh, changing the sample rate, which I've just done. And then uh, here besides that, I've got even a whole drop down list of the latest actions that I've performed within this plugin. Then I've got an A, B switch, which actually allows me to switch between two different EQ curves. So I've actually got two different instances of the same EQ, so I can A, B compare that. So here on the, the A1 I can do a little bit of a different curve than on the B1 and I can compare that, see what I like better. Well, I like B better and I want to tweak it a little bit while keeping this one intact. Then I can actually copy B to A right here with this switch. So now A is an identical copy and I can change that a little bit, see if I uh, like this change a little bit better and then B is still intact. I can reset my whole curve here with this reset switch, but be aware that it also resets my oversampling. So here you can see if I reset it, this also drops down back to one. So be aware of that as well. Then I can change my routing. This is uh, some complex stuff because normally it's on stereo, but I can actually do some uh, surround or even mid side stereo processing. I'm going to keep it on stereo for today. Beside that, I've got a settings switch, and if I click on that, I've got a whole settings menu. It even allows me to change the color scheme of the plugin. I'll just keep that on the original, and I can even zoom in and scale up the uh, the user interface. I can even change the whole time of the of the meters. So a lot of interesting stuff that I can change from within this plugin. In the row below that, you can see I've got some of these EQ instance settings, and uh, this allows me to. Uh, accurately see only 3 dB of gain so the top of my gain now is only 3 dB and uh, if I go to the 30 dB which is a, a lot you can see how precise that I can work when I'm just in that 3 dB zoom so I personally like to have it at 3 or 6 so you can do some of these really precise EQ curves like that so I can change the underlay color you can see that right here I'm not gonna go into that right now then I've got the dynamics uh, I'll show you that later when I'm going to look at the different curves, but uh, this allows me to change the behavior of the dynamics. And here with this uh, static drop down, we can actually load up a static snapshot of the frequency content of uh, maybe a mix or something else that you want to match your EQ curve to. So that can be uh, quite helpful. You can load a couple of them and you can turn them on or off right there and you can take a snapshot whenever your song is playing by using that take button right there so then we've got these uh, areas again something uh, quite insane but it can be really helpful especially when you're new to EQing I can zoom in on that stuff right here you can see here the fundamental frequencies for guitar and vocals a lot of the fundamental frequencies for vocals right there and you can actually create your own I've created this one and uh, you can edit them you can add more bands like so and then you can uh, select the frequency region from where you want these to go you give them a, a name etc and there you go you can turn it off uh, with this switch right there we can invert the curve that we've created here again something that i've uh, haven't seen before so uh, quite a cool idea not sure if it's uh, useful for a lot of stuff but you know you never know then uh, we've got a reset this resets the curve and then we've got presets resets and presets we can save presets and load presets through here. Let's dive into the EQ itself. You've already seen me uh, drag these dots around, so uh, you can uh, kind of imagine how this works. These uh, parameters right here correspond to the activated dot. So whenever we uh, want to select a frequency band, these are the connected parameters. So we can uh, either move the frequency around right here. I think we can even dial in the frequency if we want to. And then uh, we can do the same with the bandwidth, which is this parameter right here. The gain and the cut as well. And then the dynamics. And that's something I'm going to explain right now. 
The Glitz EQ is not a standard type of EQ. It uh, actually looks at the dynamic content and the energy of the signal which is already there. Imagine we're gonna be adding 3 dB. I can actually dial that in if I want to. We're adding three decibels to our signal right here and uh, we've got this dynamic 100, then it's gonna look at the energy which is already there. So if there's a lot of energy already in this frequency region, it's gonna boost this signal a lot less. And you can see that indicated with this red curve. So if we're gonna use less of that dynamic, we get a curve in between right there. So then it will maybe only boost 2 dB. So uh, we can use this uh, in a pretty flexible way so we don't overdo the equalization on certain frequencies and only when there's uh, not so much energy it will add it. So this can be uh, quite helpful. If we don't want it we can for example put this all the way down to zero that way it's always using that curve or we can use a different type of equalization curve. The outer curve normally when we select it per default is a low shelving and the outer one is a high shelving per default but we can change that by clicking this type button right here and then we get the whole drop down of types that we can choose from you can see it's a pretty large list we've got this uh, peaking one which was the one that we've just saw it's a bell one and uh, it's uh, per default using these dynamics and then we've got the inverted and that's just inverting the dynamics so that's uh, behaving uh, exactly the opposite way then we've got the peaking plane and this behaves like a regular parametric eq would do and you can see that because even the dynamics has been grayed out in this peaking one then we've got uh, the low shelving the high shelving the low pass with this uh, 12 db per octave slope then we've got the one with the 24 db per octave slope and again we've got that with a high pass as well then we've got a notch filter and then we've got a four notch filters i need to make this band width a little bit smaller then you can see it now that these are really small notches and uh, this is like a comp filter and then we've got that with eight as well and then we also have four peakings eight peakings a band pass which can be really cool to do these uh, simple telephone type of effects a low pass with only a 6 dB per octave slope and again also with a high pass. So you can see there's so many different types of bands available. So here I've got a couple of tracks. I'm just gonna solo the bass and the guitar which are uh, three tracks in total. But uh, the guitar is a stereo track so I've uh, routed both of the outputs to a group track so I'm processing them both. And on this group track I've got an instance of Glissy Q so that's just for the guitars. And um, here I uh, go to this spectrum section and uh, whenever I play it, I'm, I'll just play the guitar itself. The hold switch right there allows us to hold the spectrum so we get a graph of what's uh, played right there whenever we press hold. And we can change the color of the spectrum that we're seeing right here, etc. But the cool thing is, is that we can export this to a uh, to a slot right here. So I'm uh, gonna select one. And uh, on the bass track, I've already uh, imported uh, or inserted this uh, copy of uh, Glissy Q as well. And I've uh, sent that to two. So now I'm going to this instance right here. And then I'm saying import from bass. So I'm gonna go to this part where the bass line actually plays right here. And I'm gonna go to my Gliss EQ. You can actually see the frequency content of the bass which is on the other channel. So this can be a really helpful tool because you can see we can have three of these different imports. So we could do that with the vocal as well and maybe with, uh, I don't know, uh, a violin. So we can match uh, and, and see the frequency content of all these other different instruments. Um, if I go to the edit, I can actually change this and make this into a filled display. This makes it a lot more uh, visible if you like that. And we can even uh, say that we disable the spectrum at all. Now we only see the one which is uh, being imported. We turn that off. We have no spectrum at all. So uh, this makes it a really powerful tool, especially this feature. I, uh, I really like that. You could see there's a lot, quite some overlapping frequencies uh, from the guitar right here. So we can remove some of this uh, output here. This is an output gain. 
Then we've got the meter, as you already uh, saw it probably while we were playing. That basically concludes this whole overview of the Glissy Q, which uh, was quite a long run, but I hope you've enjoyed it because uh, I'm uh, quite amazed about uh, how complex and how many different features this plugin uh, has. You can find the Glissy Q on the, the Voxengo website, voxengo.com, and uh, you should be uh, checking that out. I'm also uh, putting the Glissy Q in a session where I'm using it, so you should check out that video real soon here on my channel. And if you like my videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching. Peace.